class happy new year happy uh 2021 from your uncle larry hope all is well out there hope nobody got a dui on new year's eve you always got you know you people always warn you about that be careful out there a lot of cops but anyway yeah hope, hope all is well um got homeschooling number 84 coming at you um Oh, man, I was just in there watching Columbo on the uh, Sundance channel. What a great show. I haven't seen that in a long time. You guys like Columbo? He's a pretty snaky guy, that Columbo. Um, let's see. Um, I was in on New Year's Eve. I told you I was going in uh, to do some finishing touches on that uh, trip to Witch Record. And it's going really good. You, got, you guitar freaks would have been totally disappointed, though, because... Uh, I was in there for seven hours or something like that, and I never touched a single guitar. I was just doing a bunch of crazy keyboard overdubs and stuff. I was playing, uh, you know, Mellotron and Upright. And I was playing Vibes, you know, and, um, doing some dr drum and tom overdubs and stuff. Just little stuff the album needed because there's plenty of guitars on there already. But uh, it's going to be great. I'm excited about it. So is Dean. Can't wait to play for you guys. Um, let's see what we got here. I got some stuff in the VCB. Uh, it's been a while since we had some VCB stuff. One guy said, Tom is a stretching freak. You know, like crazy stretches with the fingers. I do have big hands, big fingers. And, uh, you know, I think all that stuff was born to, well, first of all, that pedal show shirt. Come on, man. Love these guys. Um, 
that stuff was all born out of uh, just being a frustrated piano player. You know, I mean, I've always, I've always just wanted to extend voicings more on guitar and, you know, do uh, bigger stretches. You know, to try to get those cool notes. You know, but I think um, I sort of just developed that style over years of playing. You know, um, it's. Uh, I guess I'm glad that I was born with big hands. You know, you can do it. You know, you don't have to have giant hands to do it. You can just gotta, you know, get used to doing it. I don't. People have asked me if I have any kind of exercises or anything like that that I do. I I don't. I just you know I just make sure I warm up a little bit. Just you don't ever want to um, just come out and start playing guitar and just start trying to do a bunch of crazy stuff without just warming up a little bit. You know, just get your hands used to um, you know to to playing and then start doing some crazy bends. You know. Always be careful. If you ever feel any pain, shooting pain in here when you're doing something, stop doing it immediately. That's that's the bad kind. That's hard to make that go away. I've, I've been lucky in my life. If I ever start feeling any pain right there, I quit. Whatever I'm doing. Try something else. Um, another guy said, hey, Tom, what is your preferred string height? I've had a lot of uh, questions about, you know, setups, guitar setups and stuff like that. And... Uh, my guitar guys that work on my stuff, they always make fun of me because I like my actions so low. I like it crazy low. I like it as low as you can get it, even lower than recommended. You know, I don't mind a little bit of string buzz and, uh, you know, fret buzz here and there because I can control it. But I just hate fighting with guitars, you know. I like it when it's, they just play like real buttery and, and easy, you know. I, even when I'm playing slide, I've got a real light touch with the slide and I just sort of... Um, make it work some guitars obviously are better than others for slide i think it has to do with the uh, fretboard radius more than anything but you ever notice it's like really hard to play slide on a telly like a telly is like the worst slide guitar in the world you ever notice that i don't know why um let's see what else another guy said um uh let's see uh tom I don't get the whole relic guitar thing. I don't understand it. You know, that's a pretty polarizing subject, you know, a brand new guitar that's that's beat up already, you know. Um, I mean, I've had some over the years, I, they're cool. I have sort of mixed feelings about it. I do think it's a little silly in one hand, you know, to like purposely beat up a guitar. I mean, some people are really against it, I've noticed. Some people don't mind it. I don't care. As long as the guitar feels good, I'm happy with it. My, my problem with most relic guitars I've noticed is the feeling of the back of the neck. See, I'm really, really picky about the way the finish on the back of the neck is um, on a guitar. If I, most relic guitars, they feel like they're just sanded off, you know, the back of the neck, and I don't like that. I don't mind a guitar where the lacquer has been played off, rubbed off just by playing. Like, I really, really like that feeling, but I don't like it when it feels like it's been sanded or rough sanded. Oh, God, I hate that. Um... I like on these old Gibsons, I like when it, when the lacquer is like, you can feel a lacquer and it's very, it's very smooth and it's not sticky feeling. A lot of uh, newer guitars have that sort of sticky feeling lacquer. Oh Lord, I hate that. Like when you're playing an outdoor gig, you feel like you can't wipe the neck down enough and it's, it's, it's every time you wipe it down, it immediately gets sticky again. Oh, I hate that. That's one of Uncle Larry's uh, pet peeves along with the sharp fret ends. He hates that stuff. Okay, Uncle Larry, the Farmland Cafe shirt is one of the softest, coolest looking tees I've ever had. The Session Man logo on the back is top shelf. Thank you, man. Um, that's Drew. That's our boy Drew at the Guitar House. He's always looking out for us with these high quality uh, t-shirts. No uh, no Gildans around here, guys. Um, what else we got here? Thanks for saying that. Appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys, you know, helping out the farmland by buying those shirts, man. It's very cool. Uh, hopefully we can save them from going out of business. Uh, another guy said, this is pretty funny. This made me laugh. I, I mentioned in my last video that Todd Rundgren is the king of the polychord. So the guy said in quotations, Todd is the king of the polychord. And then said Jacob, Jacob Collier in quotations, hold my Capri, hold my Capri son. <laughs> That's pretty witty, man. That's pretty witty. I like that. Okay. Um, another guy said, hey, Tom, 
when you get done with the with the record with Dean, are you gonna break down who played what on the liner notes? I don't know. I I, I don't know if I'm gonna need to. I mean, when you hear the record, you'll notice that it's pretty easy to tell who played what. You know, he's got such an amazing distinctive style like his slide playing and stuff is just so distinctive you'll probably won't even need it but it, but if it helps maybe we'll maybe we'll work that into the old liner notes there let me show you this crazy uh chord progression i was playing these are some uh high dollar chords here for you guys um i started messing with this yesterday when i was just goofing around on the guitar but um here it is like a a diminished It's like a G major over B, so it's like a. I got an open G string in here. And then. Same chord, but down to E. And here's some tricky stuff here. That's like an A down at nine over C sharp. So that's the whole, the whole thing is. And then this chord. A, A flat six, or like you can think of it as F minor over G sharp. G minor seven. And the whole thing starts over. And then we go to some more normal chords. F, A minor. E flat, B flat, F, that's like a C sharp major, and I'm imposing an E flat major over it, a whole step up. And that's F major. So, um, four notes. F major, you know, over C, like with a heavy emphasis on the third. Um, sorry. And then back to the A flat. This crazy chord, uh, like a really weird voicing of a uh, B diminished. Look at this. How do they even do it? I think of it in my mind like an F6. I'm barring the two middles. Over B. I don't know, like, piano players would laugh at me for calling it that, but that's kind of how I think of it. You know, soloing over that, you could follow the melody, or you could you could really get a lot of mileage out of like a pentatonic F minor on on the whole thing. <laughs> I didn't do much of that on my particular solo, but it's amazing how much of that would work over those silly chords if you were so inclined to try it. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you soon. Let's hope that 2021 is a much better year than we had. Uh, although if it wasn't for 2020, we would have never known each other. All right, guys, see you.